Welcome back, friends, to Years in Review, the episodic show where I look back on years in history, starting from year 1 AD to our current year of 2022. I'll be going over important events anywhere from births to wars to deaths and many other things in between that have gone on in our history. I have changed the format of the show where I'll now cover five years per video. This will get the videos to be a little longer and give you guys a little more meat to bite on. I'll be using this episode as a catch-up to get to 5 AD, so it'll be, this will only be cover four years this episode. And every uh, video will either end on a half decade or a full decade going forward. This time we're looking at the years 2 to 5 AD. Let's begin. First things first, what are the Romans up to? Nothing much, honestly. Tiberius is still leading stepdaddy's armies in Gaul, but with the added bonus of being exiled from Rome due to making Augustus mad at him because he didn't want to be his heir. This will soon come into question when grandson of Caesar, Lucius Caesar, he's brother of Gaius from the last video, uh, he died of being a little anti-vaxxer sick boy in, in Gaul while in the same campaign as Tiberius. Maybe T got angry and pissed in Lucius' cereal, killing him. We'll never know. Side note and correction from last video, by the way, Tiberius isn't the heir yet, I know, sorry about the spoiler for future episodes, but Lucius and Gaius are currently the twin heirs at this point. Well, not Lucius anymore, he's dead. But following his death, Augustus's wifey convinced him to unexile her son Tiberius. So meanwhile, big brother Gaius is fucking around in the Middle East at this point, negotiating with Phratis V, king of Parthia, aka Persia, aka modern day Iran. Uh, the negotiations ended with Parthia acknowledging that Rome was the one true sugar daddy of Armenia. Uh, on this mission, as an advisor to Gaius, Gigachad Juba II, Roman's client king of uh, Nubia, uh, who meets Princess Glaphiria, a widow of the king of Judea, uh, which is modern-day Israel, and he falls in love with her, and they pork a lot after Juba's wife, Cleopatra Selene II, dies mysteriously, by the way. In 3 AD, based Augustus has his emperorship renewed for another 10 years, cementing his status as the big dictator. The only other notable event of this year was that Gaius, who's still partying in Armenia at this point, once again negotiating with people, this time a rebellion, turns out Armenians didn't like being ruled by Rome. The leader of this rebellion, named Abaddon, wow, this guy has the most evil sounding name in history. So he invited Gaius over for talks in his, in his little fortress. Um, and surprise, surprise, evil guy Abaddon set up a trap and not the hottest Stolfo kind. <coughs> Uh, so Gaius was wounded in this trap, and it had his lieutenants besiege the city in anger. He was wounded in his escape, and it seemingly wasn't that bad because he continued his, re his rebellion crushing uh, for the rest of the year. Okay, so 3 AD was mostly boring aside from that one rebellion, but 4 AD got that sweet, sweet Roman politicking, Game of Thrones style family drama that you all love. Starting with cool guy Gaius following in his little brother's footsteps and dying from that seemingly not serious wound I just talked about. It got infected and killed him five months after his escape from Abaddon's fortress. Uh, this became a big issue for Caesar, who now had no heirs. This led to the newly unexiled Tiberius being summoned to Rome and coronated as crown prince and heir of Augustus. Caesar also named Agrippa Postumus, who was the younger brother of Gaius and Lucius as his heir and adopted him into the Caesar clan, like how his brothers were, which hopefully he doesn't end up in a similar way. Which, by the way, I know it's a little confusing, but Tiberius is like the main heir, with Agrippa being the like secondary heir. So newly minted future emperor Tiberius names Germanicus, who is his son, which he was named that because Tiberius killed a bunch of Germans. He is named Tiberius' heir. So there's a lot of heirs going on now. Big T also goes back to Gaul, where he meets with, few, with German tribe Cherusi, uh, where he becomes friends with them and lets them join the Roman legions. Um, Julia the Elder, who is the known hoe of the Caesar family, she's daughter of Augustus and former wife of Tiberius before they got a divorce, for, you know, she slept around a lot. She returns from exile and lives in southern Italy, but is ignored by the family because she almost ruined daddy's alliance with the Agrippa family, which, side note, Tiberius, Gaius, Lucius, and Agrippa are all from the Agrippa family uh, before being adopted to the Caesar one. Uh, the head of the Agrippa family is Augustus' BFF for life and the legendary general Marcus Agrippa and his family member became Caesar's wife. Last for the Caesar family drama, Claudia Livia, also known as Livilia, which means little Livia in Latin, 
uh, granddaughter of Augustus's wife, was married to Tiberius's son, Drusus Caesar. So if you haven't gotten it yet, Caesar really likes cementing marriage alliances with his friends and also likes adopting a lot of people. This results in a lot of step-sibling marriages and marriages with people who probably saw each other at the dining room table for Thanksgiving way before they even had a sexual thought in their brain. Um, the Caesar family is literally one of the biggest step-sibling pornos in history. Some antipasto and <laughs> porno. porno. In other news, away from Rome, <laughs> let's talk about Fratis V again. He made that peace deal with, with Gaius, which uh, didn't go down that well because his subjects overthrew him just two years later. He was replaced by Arades III, his distant relative. Okay, so our final year of, of this show is pretty tame, not gonna lie. First, Big T is back on campaign and conquers Germania Inferior, uh, aka Belgium. Caesar names Kuno Belain as his first client king of Britain. Uh, this expanded Rome's reach to the island of Britannia, while not really having much to do with it because Kuno was pretty independent. German tribes kind of tired of being slaughtered by um, our boy T, so they sent a lot of ambassadors to Rome asking for peace. And kind of, hey, let's maybe be friends now. Now let's move on to our side hustle in China. Let me introduce you to Wang Mang, the big brain. In our last video, I forgot to mention that our man Ping is like 10 at this point. He, his dad died way too early, and his dad's bestie, the man himself, Wang Meng, basically rules over the Han Dynasty through Regency. Uh, and he conducts the first ever census in history, which reveals that there is about 60 million Chinese people living in Han China. Um, Wang also kind of just does what he wants and tells Ping what to do. And one of those things is marrying his daughter. Uh, at the age of 10, by the way. He uses this power over Ping to also name himself the superior duke of all of China. So Wang is kind of just running around unchecked in China at this point. Now, let's move away from China and talk about babies. We love this part of the show. Honestly, there's not that many popular baby births during this time period. Most are megaly unknown Chinese people and even lesser known Roman people who are. So none of them really matter and I won't waste your guys' time by covering them. Uh, but you know who does matter though? Jesus. The most, most historians and religious scholars believe that Jesus was born in 5 AD. So this is the year where all that stuff goes down about him with the nativity scene, with the three wise men, with Joseph, with mom, Mary, you know, who is the, the only mom to retain the title of a virgin. So all that stuff happens 5 AD. Okay, guys, that wraps up the years 2 to 5 AD in history. I am so sorry it took so long for this sequel, but I've been really busy with end of the semester college projects and exams. Please leave a like and a subscribe because it really helps motivate me to do more of these. Please leave a comment, either tell me what part of the world you want to hear more about in these videos. And if you're interested in joining in that hot, steamy step family porno that Caesar's trying to create. I really hope that all of you guys have a great ass day. And that was years in review. This is Matt with 2017 years to go.